everyone, I'm Melissa, and today is the final in the Certificate in Basic Animal Care Science. And today it's all about ruminants. And I'm here with Sue, who's going to tell us exactly what a ruminant is. Hi Mel, how, how are, you? are you? Nice and windy. <laughs> <laughs> a ruminant is basically a hoofed animal that digests its food in two stages. And what that means is it um, eats the raw material like the grass, and then it um, regurgitates it back mm. up, chews the cud, and then swallows again. And um, ruminants are also, another definition, um, is that they're all even-toed. Oh, so really? if, if you look at sheep, they've got um, a split in their hooves and these two, two <laughs> or toes <laughs> covered by hooves. And um, camels are also ruminants and they have four toes. Oh. So even toes. So what um, the groups that fall into ruminants are your cows, your sheep, um, llamas, camels, goats. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there's quite a few. So they've got two stomachs? They've got four stomachs. Four stomachs. So I've brought a stomach with me, just to <laughs> make it yeah, easier for you. <laughs> so this, this is the main stomach, it's called the rumen. What happens is as the cow eats, um, the food, the hard food um, falls down to the bottoms and as the bacteria, there's bacteria and protozoa in here, they digest it, break it down. And as this is digested, it becomes liquid. So what happens is the solid stuff gets regurgitated as cud. Oh, right. And then if you see the cows and the sheep, they look really peaceful and just see them chewing, chewing, chewing. What they're doing is just breaking down this food even more so it's easier for it to um, digest. So that's and why they're through. always sort of chewing. You see yeah. cows always chewing. That's right, and it is. It's, it's quite peaceful. If they don't chew their cut, there's normally something wrong with them. Right. So what happens then? So this rumen, there's another little one here called a reticulum, which is a smaller stomach, which has the same function as the rumen. Once it becomes liquid, it then passes through to another stomach called abomasum. And what happens there is all the water is taken out of the food, so it becomes quite solid again. Mm. And then it passes through into a fourth stomach, which is like the stomach we have, which has got um, acids to break down the, the food and... Um, uh, basically get it ready for absorption in the small intestines. But the difference um, with their acid is it breaks down bacteria because there's heaps of bacteria in this rumen and if it goes through to the small intestines and gets absorbed into the body, they can get quite sick. Mm. So it breaks them down, kills the bacteria before it sends it out. And what about sheep? There's, there's lots of sheep here behind us. Yeah. Where do they start from? Well, sheep have been around for 10,000 years, domesticated, Jeez. and we first started spinning their wool 5,000 years ago and I found something interesting that a uh, pound of yarn can make up to five kilometres of, um, of yarn, sorry, a pound of wool can make up to five kilometres of yarn, so that's quite a, quite a lot. Wow, isn't it? Yeah. So what are the main purposes of sheep? Sheep are basically bred for um, meat, for wool, as well as for milk. Not many people know that. These sheep behind us here are um, composite sheep, which means they've got um, three breeds, which um, each breed brings one of those qualities. So these guys are Cooperers, which are bred for their wool. Right. So good, good quality wool. They've also got Texels in them, which is the good meat one. And then they've also got East Frisian bred in for the milk. So hopefully um, they'll have good meat, good um, wool, and plenty of milk for their lambs. Gee, they're a handy creature to have around, Isn't aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And do you know, um, like we know there's a lot of sheep in New Zealand, is it mainly these sort of breeds here? There's also, New Zealand has the Merino as well, which is um, for, known for its um, good quality wool. And then, yeah, these are becoming more common now and used by most farmers. And um, they're also milking them for human consumption now. So, yeah. so where do they originate from? They um, originate, well, basically we, with the domestication process, the Phoenicians again, which we heard about in the, in the rabbits, they basically brought them in from North Africa and Asia. Oh. And they, um, the Phoenicians live in what is now known as Spain, and that's where the merino comes from. And it's quite interesting because between the 12th and I think the 16th centuries, they um, were exporting the, the wool to the likes of, the, of Europe and Britain. And then after Napoleon came and conquered the world, um, the merino was then exported out and that's how it got to New Zealand eventually. A fascinating to think yeah. even sheep have such a huge history. history isn't it? <laughs> so do they prefer certain climates? Um, it depends, they're quite adaptable. So there's certain breeds which would do really well in, in the cold or temperate climates and others that um, prefer the warmer climates but they would as long as like you wouldn't want a, a, a merino in too hot a climate for too long mm -hmm. because of the or make sure you shear them if you do so they can cope there's a sheep um, 
um, Mulan, I think it's called, in Canada. Uh -huh. That looks like a goat, and that's the early ancestor of the sheep. Uh -huh. it's, it hasn't got wool; it's got hair, and it's got horns like really? a goat. <laughs> but and, and that survives in the you know minus forty degrees up to plus forty degrees, so they're quite adaptable. And farmers always seem to be so busy all year round with crutching and dagging that sort of thing. How does that go through the seasons? Yeah, well, what they do is they they normally um, crutch and dag their sheep um, before lambing because um, dagging or is, is basically where these faeces covered all around the back end on, on the wool. So they do that before lambing as well as before the shearers come so they get good quality wool that's not dirtied. Yeah, so um, that's the main times they do it and obviously if they need to do it more often they will if, if it's too soiled. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. And because there are so many sheep, how often do they breed? Well they, um, they breed once a year produce lambs in the, they um, produce lambs in the spring and they put with the rams in the autumn and they're pregnant for five months less a week easy to remember okay yeah and they um, most sheep today are bred to have twins some um, some have triplets and some have the only one lamb but most farmers aim for twins so are sheep usually used just for wool and meat and things like that well there are some other uses that they do but it's not too common. In India they um, they use them for fighting, they have sheep fighting. Really? They basically pick them on their size and um, when they're three years old they put them in the ring and um, in, in the organised tournaments the victorious sheep will be um, displayed in the town in the main street and you know. <laughs> How funny. That's right and also in Canada in Calgary at the big um, rodeo show you have children which normally between the ages of four and seven years old what happens, they, um, as they come out of the chute, the, these kids are riding them, just holding onto the wool. <laughs> and sheep don't buck too much, so it's quite safe, and they wear helmets. But um, just the gait of it, the kids get dislodged, and the winner normally stays on for six seconds or more. <laughs> <laughs> How funny, isn't it? That's right, yeah. They also do countries. sheep racing in some, in some countries, but it's not as popular as you can imagine as horse racing, because <laughs> it's a bit boring, they don't move as fast. <laughs> yeah. And do sheep have many predators, would you say, as a rule? Um, not in New Zealand, really, but they, they do in other countries, yeah. Yeah, I suppose some of those sheep dogs look pretty mean, don't they? <laughs> they do look mean, don't they? <laughs> the rain's coming up, should we jump on that motorbike and get I out of so, here? I think so, get out of here, let's go. <laughs> As you can see, we've got some lovely alpacas behind us here in the background. And Mike's going to answer a few questions on these interesting looking animals. Firstly, I'd like to know, Mike, what's the difference between a llama and an alpaca? Well, the llama's a much bigger animal. And the most distinguishing feature, if you don't know much about them between the two, is that the llamas always have banana ears. I mean, really coiled over ears. If they haven't, if they haven't got those ears, they're not a purebred llama. The llama was the original South American pack animal and the alpacas were the South American uh, meat and fibre animals. Oh, right, so alpacas are from South America? Yes, yes. Are they closely uh, related, the two? Yes, they're all part of the camelid family. Uh, same genus as the camels, uh, uh, camels of the desert, you might say. Yeah. Right. But these are the South American version rather than the European or Asian version. So what's the main purpose of an alpaca? <laughs> well, at the moment in New Zealand, the main purpose is uh, the fibre. My wife m spins, knits, weaves the fibre into various uh, scarves and other garments. Oh, gee. Also, there's a move, because there aren't too many al alpacas in New Zealand, there's a move to breed up the numbers in herds. So we started with three, we've now got seven. <laughs> really? Yeah. Gee. Can I ask, is it wool? Is this wool that uh, our packers have got? It's the technical term it. is fibre. Fibre. Um, the difference between wool and alpaca fibre is that wool yeah. has a lot of scales on it. That's why it can felt, you know, if you right. wash a wool sweater it'll felt. Alpaca fibre has a lot less scales, um, very fine scales, so 
It's not that easy to felt, but it can be felted. But that's the main difference between the two. Right. And so you're saying that you breed these guys? Yeah. Um, so, so how often do they breed? Uh, once a year. They have a gestation period of 335 days, which is very long for an animal of this sort. They also uh, have their young in the mornings. This is a hangover from the South, Af South American days when they had, the youngsters had to be up and running by uh, nightfall so that uh, they could escape the, the nocturnal predators. Right. And so they're pretty friendly by the well, looks of things. as you can see. This is a new experience for me. <laughs> <laughs> they're always friendly when they're eating. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they're quite a safe animal to be around. Ah, yes. We can take little children into the paddock with them and they'll come and be inquisitive because they're very, they are a very inquisitive animal, but they're, they're, they're not dangerous at all. It's got a little soft wee mouth. <laughs> yeah. So why alpacas? What do you particularly like about them? Well, uh, I like the nature of the animal. They're, I mean, as you can see, you're a complete stranger, but they're quite happy to come up to you and make a, make a fuss and eat, well, particularly when you've got nuts in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's a draw card, all right. Mm. So what's some certain characteristics about them that make them different to other animals? Well, obviously the the length of the neck. Yeah, crazy looking. <laughs> uh, that they're they're very different from sheep. For instance, sheep and cattle have four stomachs. These guys only have three, even oh, though they really? are still ruminants. Right. Um, they they um, are very susceptible to chemicals. For instance, if you have to give one a, a, an anaesthetic, you use the same amount as you'd use for, for a cat. So oh, they're okay. very very different to treat. Right. So they, they're just fascinating. <laughs> and how intelligent are they? We think they're very intelligent. They're also very wary, as you can hear. There's a tractor working over there, and this mm. guy's just heard it, just checking things out. <laughs> Same as when you were first here, the, they check the camera out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's always a bit cautious of that. <laughs> so how much care and work do they need? Uh, they need... Uh, Basically, the, they need good fresh pasture, they need roughage, they need hay in front of them at all times, even in the middle of the summer, because the lush grass isn't the ideal for them. Um, they need the normal, oh, sorry, they need the normal care and attention that any uh, herd animal needs. And they are herd animals, you can't have one, you have to have right. at least two. And after that, basically all they need is a, an occasional injections of a Vitamins A, D and E. Okay. <laughs> Pipe down now. <laughs> Turn that way. <laughs> Not too close. The A, D and E is because they don't, oh. don't absorb all, all, all They're the... They're twitchy, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> They're not twitchy at and all. And always seem to have this thing about bucking me. <laughs> mm, um, you might have touched or gone close to touching the head. They don't like the head being touched for some reason. As you know. can see, I can rub this wee girl's neck, but... Uh, uh, if I went to the head, she'd jerk away, do you see? Right. Even to somebody that she knows. Can they sense fear, do you think? Uh, yes. They can be aggressive as well in the right circumstances. Not yeah, these girls. Totally. You're all right. You're, these, these are three females. But the males are used, particularly in Australia, where they have a fox problem with their sheep. They run a male alpaca with the, the, with the sheep. And... Uh, the alpaca will keep the foxes away or actually destroy the foxes if they get really too yeah. close to the sheep. So they have fear in that sense. Uh, as you can see, there's this jerk reaction, which is a little bit of fear as well. And you might be able to hear this old lady in the background whistling a little bit. That That's her caution. She's just a little bit concerned or a little bit afraid. This one here? Yeah. Is this an older yeah, alpaca? Yeah, she's... she's what, she's five years old now, I believe, yes. Yeah. Gee. So how long do they usually live for? Uh, well, there are animals still in New Zealand still breeding at the age of 15, so um, I guess they, there's a, an wow. expectation of 20 is... Uh, they might take a bit more food. Reasonable. So they don't escape. <laughs> 15, gee. Yeah. So they can still breed at that age. Yeah. A wee bit uh, more? I'm quite enjoying this. Um, so they're herd animals, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, when we brought the four females in this morning, 
knowing you were coming, that the three males that were in the adjacent paddock got quite upset and raced up and down the paddock and this sort of thing because they could see their friends disappearing. Oh, right. And do they prefer certain sorts of climates? Yeah, really Southland's a bit uh, too moist for them, but they've adapted. I mean, they're from above 4,000 feet in the Andes is their Gee. normal habitat, but... Uh, and do different breeds, apart from the colouring, do they look different? No, there's really only one breed of alpacas. Okay. Yeah. Um, the llama, the guanaco, and the, uh, the other South oh, Americans. Genius. Right. <laughs> and so how do they communicate with each other? Is it this, this funny wee noise, mother one? I yes, guess, right? yes, a little bit that way. They don't, they don't have a bar or anything of that sort like sheep have. Basically, this is the... the slightly afraid warning signal but occasionally they'll they'll make a more snorting noise right so um are they prone to illness or things like that what's no the... really they're very good they don't have foot rot so you don't have that problem with uh, them like you do with sheep at times right mm. and what's their eyesight like very good so they've got big eyes yes they? even so you you think they can well they can see things at great distances one of the things that always happens when we bring this old lady in, she checks the sheep out as they're about five or six paddocks away because she can see them. But peculiarly enough, they don't have good night vision, which is quite surprising when you see the size of their eyes. But uh, they, uh, if we need to bring them in for some reason at night, we've got to turn lights on all around the place so they can see what's going on. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How sweet. Oh, there he goes. He's on the jump again. Yeah. So. You enjoy keeping, you get quite a bit of pleasure from the alpacas? Oh yes, yes, they're great. Do alpacas spit like camels do? Yes, they have a little <laughs> noise, which is just establishing the pecking order between them. Oh. Uh, but if they really get upset, they can actually bring out the contents of the first stomach and send it out at about a metre or more. Really? But uh, I've never seen that and I don't want to. No, <laughs> doesn't sound that appealing. And they look really heavy animals. Are they all fluff or are they yes. quite heavy boned? Once they're shorn, you'll think these are a totally different size of animal. Um, this one's not been shorn and you can see there's a fair length of fibre on her. That's a really um, how do you how do you shear them? Is it like a sheep? Uh, not quite, no. Uh, there's a couple that live in Awaka who are shearers, specialist shearers for alpacas from uh, anywhere from Awaka to Christchurch. Right. They bring with them all their gear. They uh, have, bring like a, a big, thick tarpaulin, a bit like a, an old gym mat used to be in schools. And they, they pick the alpaca up, lie it down on its side, stretch the feet out. The Are they quite feet. good? Yeah, They're front overhead. feet in one, on one direction, back feet in the other. Shear one side, roll the animal over and shear the other side and really? it's all over. Gee, what are the fleeces like? They must be massive. Uh, yes, they can be quite substantial. A good animal will produce, say, three kilograms of the blanket. That's the good wool from the one side over the back to the other side. Right. The neck and the legs are uh, less grade of fibre, sometimes used for filling duvets and that sort of thing. Oh, really? Yeah. And is there a large alpaca population in New Zealand? Uh, it's a growing one. There's about 7,000 animals at the moment. And there's a very active alpaca association which anybody getting into alpacas should join if you join the association you get a big thick manual of do to do's, do's and, and don'ts and uh, you get uh, uh, a lot of peer support what do you say some of the biggest do's and don'ts would be regarding alpacas oh the first thing I, the first don't is make sure you know which ant, which plants are poisonous around the place okay we have to go around and make sure there's no foxgloves in the in the area they can eat, of course. And the other do that you have to, is most important is that don't try and just feed them on grass. They have to have additional roughage like the hay or uh, access to, to rough pasture rather than just sweet south and grass. Okay. Very interesting. If I ever go into our packers, I'll be sure to find that association. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. This has been fascinating. You're most welcome.
Well, they've officially dressed me up to look like Farmer Jones. We're here on Arnold's Dairy Farm, and Arnold's going to tell us a few interesting facts about cows. First, Arnold, tell me, what kind of cows are these all lurking around behind us in the background? Most of them are uh, crosses between Frisian and Jerseys. Frisian and Jerseys? This is a pure Frisian, and then all the smaller ones are all crosses. Gee, they're massive, aren't they? Nah, they're it's... so huge. Are some breeds <laughs> larger than others? Yeah, Frisian are much bigger than the crossbreds. Gee, so how do you cut them around? Oh, they have four feet to walk. <laughs> don't cut them around. <laughs> Fair enough, but don't you ever have to move them places? No, they, they do everything walking themselves. They right. walk themselves, yeah. They don't go on the truck, there's no need for it. Okay. No. I'm always petrified to walk into a paddock with cows. Are they dangerous? Can no, they kick? No, no, no. They're usually quite uh, nosy. Yeah, they, they want to know you, and, well, they want to see what's going on. And usually they come up to you and they want to get petted. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Going back to the different breeds of cows, yep. do some produce better milk than others and others better for meat? Or is there uh, much of a muchness? No, we got all, uh, uh, especially for milk, yeah, and uh, we haven't got, well, the bulls we put over there for meat. Yeah, right. but not for uh, the replacement calves. We keep them ourselves, and that's all meat, uh, all milk. Sorry. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how long do they usually live for before you cut them off? Well, that's one of the oldest ones. I don't know if you can see it. She is uh, 13 years old. 30. 13. 13. That's Jesus. in human terms. It's about uh, 70, 80. Right, and how can you know that? Is that by the number on them? They've yeah. all got numbers, yeah. I see. They, you see the little pinky attack on that one? Yeah, and the a little tags that says the year they're born. Oh, right. When they got born as calves, we give them an ear tag. Like this one here, 74. It's born in 04. Okay. Yeah. So what's the main purpose of having the number on them? So I know which one is which one. Right, and why do you know, need to know which one is which one? Uh, for artificial breeding for her testing uh, yeah well you got the name and I got the name and uh, they <laughs> haven't got the name because I, I don't I can't find 300 names <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'd like to see you try doing that yeah. so tell me the average day here on the farm for you guys we go up five o'clock and uh, if you haven't got anything special then we are in about six o'clock half past six at night again Right. Yeah. And that's for feeding time? That's two times milking and then your normally farm work, your normal farm work. Right. Do they <laughs> need much shelter? Or do they just run uh, around? If we got quite a bit of shelter on the farm, but uh, uh, if it is raining and bad weather, they go behind the trees, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the, I'm just looking at their big hoofs. Do they ever get cracks in them at all? Yeah. They got a couple of cows with sore feet, uh, but not too bad. Yeah, this is, this is quite good. Yeah. All right, interesting. And they're all lined up all over the place. It's amazing how they've just managed to all come in like that. Yep. Yep. Is this every day they just mosey on in exactly the same? Yep. It's habit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd actually be quite interested to have a go at milking a cow, if I may. Yep. How do you feel about that? I'll go for it. Yeah? Are you <laughs> going to show me how to do this? Yep. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I'm going to try to milk a cow. Okay. Yeah, you come on this side, on this side. On, on, this, on, this, on this side, the houses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. you hold it like that, like that. Okay, yeah. you can get that in there. That button has to be pushed in. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to kick me, is it? Huh? It's not going to kick me, is it? No, but get it. you're sucking. So does, it, does this <laughs> go to the first one? Yeah, yeah. You have to keep that in. That's your tap. Okay. Ooh, do I go just yeah. to the. Yeah. Yeah. On this one? Yeah. No, on this one. 
Ja. Okay. Yeah. That was a close shave. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Yeah, she's going on. Yeah. Second, yeah, let her go, let her go. And let her go? Let her go, yeah, yeah. You'll be right. Wow, it's one commotion. More. Come on, one more. Okay. This one, on this, stand on this side. Okay. Gee, it must be pretty busy trying to do all these cows. Okay, right. Ah. You hold them like that, hey. Okay, there's one. I keep thinking it's going to kick me in the face. No, it's not. Are you sure? Yeah. Because you're sucking so much, so you're losing your vacuum. All right. Yeah, so. Okay. I hope you understand. You can see it, it's going to kick me. Oh, yeah, that one works. Yeah. Okay, and the front one. Now you hold it down the end, so you guide, you guide it in with your finger. <laughs> oh, that yeah, was easy. Yeah, go for it. Oh, oh. the first one fell oh. off again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll be yeah. putting my day job anytime soon. Go on, next one. Oh, next one. Don't, no, don't do the next one. Do the next one. And how long does it take for them to fill up? How do you mean to fill up? Yeah. How much milk comes out of them? Uh, some cows go, oh, this, I have to wash that one because uh, if I, they are too dirty, you have to wash them, yeah? Right. So how much milk comes out of them? Uh, in the evening milking, about 10 to 15 litres. 10 to 15 litres, gee. So how long does it take to do the whole lot of cows? The, the complete milking? The complete milking? Yes! <laughs> the complete milking. Uh, hour and a half. Really? Jeepers. Yeah. And then, then we still have to do the cleaning up. Right. Yeah? So, okay. Yeah. So it's quite a process, I see. Wow, you do it so fast. That looks like a jersey. Yeah. The brown one. Yeah, the first two are crossbreds. Right. Really always black. Okay. This is a Frisian. Yeah, black and white. This white feet. This is a Frisian. Okay. Yeah. Right. And it's a bigger cow. So you can tell by looking at them. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. Uh, it is not always true. Right. Sometimes you can have a small cow, but it depends on what color they get. Right. Yeah. Very good. Well, I think I'm going to leave you to it now, Arnold. Thank you. I'd like to say I'll help you, but I'd be lying. I'm going to get out of here when the going's good. I want to get out of here. Uh, I want to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> uh, good to get out of there. There's far too many cow hooves to my liking. It was actually a lot harder than it looked trying to get those wee cups to stick on. Well, anyway, that's it from us. This is the final episode in the Certificate in Basic Animal Care Science. I hope you've enjoyed the series as much as I have. I'm not half as scared of these animals as I used to be. But if you'd like more information about this or any of the other courses at SIT, you can call the friendly staff there on 0800 Sit to Learn. See you next time.